Welcome to the Anxiety Slayer series. Our mission is to assist you with creating more peace and tranquility in your life through anxiety release exercises and supportive tools created to slay your anxiety. Today's Anxiety Slayer podcast is brought to you by the Anxiety Slayer Academy. We've been offering a free podcast for over eight years to help anyone suffering with anxiety find relief. Now we're helping you go deeper by providing step-by-step support on how you can get the best experience from our favorite tools and techniques for overcoming anxiety. Get your free Anxiety Slayer starter course at anxietyslayer.teachable.com. Welcome back to Anxiety Slayer. I'm Shan Vanderleek here today with my wonderful friend and co-host Ananga Sivir. We come together weekly on Skype to share Anxiety Slayer sessions with you and often answer listener questions from our inbox and Facebook page. Together, Ananga and I share a powerful collection of techniques to reduce anxiety. This week, we're talking about how to soothe anxiety with nourishing food. Welcome back, Ananga. Hi, Shen. I'm so glad we're talking today about how to better nourish ourselves to soothe anxiety. It's such an important part of caring for ourselves. Absolutely, and the perfect time of year to be talking about it too. We've also added some seasonal and cleansing tips to this podcast as we receive a lot of questions about health anxiety. So the suggestions here are for foods and spices that can calm anxiety, but also support overall health and immunity. Health anxiety naturally settles down a notch when we know we're doing the best we can to look after ourselves. That is true, and and these choices that we make really do begin first thing in the morning, right when we get up. Yep, breakfast is a really important meal, particularly for anxiety sufferers. We discussed in a recent podcast about the body types, according to Ayurveda, and one of those types, vata, which is most prone to suffering from anxiety, does not appreciate feeling empty. It's their nature to get up and grab a cup of coffee and just rush into the day, maybe grab a donut or something quick and light and it really doesn't serve us well at all so breakfast is very important and the ideal choice for anxiety sufferers would be a warm grounding and nourishing start to the day and when we're thinking about warm and nourishing starts to the day i know that uh, oatmeal is a good choice for some i know that you have a, a good porridge that you make that has some yummy things in it i don't remember exactly what maybe you could share Yeah, I make uh, a barley porridge with ground flax and some chia seeds, cinnamon and some chopped dates. But I'm working on reducing some kapha at the moment. So for me, barley is the better option. But if you're suffering from anxiety and you have the need for a really nourishing, heavy, sweet grounding breakfast, then oatmeal is is the best option. So oats, soak some dates overnight, chop them up and put them in. Uh, Use almond milk, which is very grounding, naturally sweet and nourishing. Add some cinnamon, which helps you feel satisfied longer and stops blood sugar spikes. Mm, And it tastes so good. And I I love being able to have choices, too, if I want to go from the the barley to the oats or, you know, whatever I need to do. And you're taking such good care of yourself by making this a, a part of every morning. Yeah. And I know that not everybody has, believe me, I've realized this. I used to be a person who flew out the door and maybe had coffee and maybe didn't. So we need to be thoughtful about the healthy choices that you can make as well when you're on the run. But I've found that pre-planning really helps with that. Waking up maybe a little bit early, uh, allowing yourself to be just a bit more thoughtful about the choice. And and uh, and speaking of coffee. Um, There are alternatives to to coffee and alternatives to caffeine, as we've talked many, many times. Caffeine is not always helpful. Actually, I'm not sure when it is helpful if you suffer with anxiety. Yeah, anything that makes you feel spun out and elevates your heart rate really doesn't help if you're suffering from anxiety. So you mentioning pre-planning, Shan, is also really important. Get your oatmeal lined up ready the night before. Put the raw ingredients in a bowl and have your almond milk ready in the fridge so it's it's all set to go. 
just allow a little extra time to transition into wakefulness and activity in the morning. And caffeine really does elevate our heart rate. It might make us think that we're getting going, but it gives a push to the body that really can feel like an adrenaline spike. It can even feel like the beginnings of an anxiety attack. It doesn't serve us well at all. So really to avoid those spikes from coffee in the morning, if you can. And there are some delicious alternatives available. There's one that you like in particular, Whole Earth. It is. Whole Earth Organic No Calf is my, it's my tipple. <laughs> it's my coffee alternative. I actually have some in my flask here. I bought it over because I, I knew we'd be recording this podcast today. I was like, I'm going to take some over with me. So I'm really tuned in to just how nice it really is. So nice. It's made from barley, chicory. It has a slightly malty taste to it. It has some figs in there, which is really good for people suffering with anxiety, often suffer with dryness and constipation in the body. So it's got all those good flavors in there, but none of them really dominate. It just tastes like a nice toasted malty cereal drink, particularly nice made with almond milk or oat milk. Certainly there's other alternatives, but this one sounds really delightful. I haven't tried it yet, so I'm going to have to. I tend to switch out coffee for tea in the morning. I still drink a little bit of coffee on occasion, but uh, it's unlikely that I finish a whole cup. So I've learned that I can still, because I love the flavor so much, but I know that I don't want to agitate my body. I don't want to feel spun out and so far so good. But uh, I often will have uh, tea as well and make sure that I always have a, a nice large choice. And if I need to, if I feel like I want to have a little caffeine in my tea, um, I love chai tea. And it's just really being mindful of uh, what works for us and what doesn't. What do we like? How does it make us feel? And if it doesn't make you feel good, then you've learned something, set it aside. Be done with it if you can. Yeah. And I think it really helps to be playful and experimental with things. I always have different teas coming and going that I love. I have one at the moment, which I'm crazy on, and it's quite a new flavor to me and a new tea in my cupboard. But right now it's my my treat in the morning. It's a turmeric tea with coconut. It has a little black tea in it, but not enough to give you any uh, issues with caffeine. When I worked in London, I used to drink a lot of black coffee. And I remember when I stopped, I would be just with my head on my desk for about mm -hmm. a month. It took about a month for me to really uh, feel like I could function. But I don't miss it now. And I really like experimenting with other flavors. So there are lots of cereal coffees, as we just mentioned. Barley cup is another alternative. Um, I recommend going for organic uh, wherever possible because cereal crops are heavily soaked with pesticide and the nature of those grains and the way they grow, they really do absorb a lot of pesticides. So organic's really important. And then we've discussed options for a nice nourishing breakfast, oatmeal with cinnamon. You can add some saffron for extra calm and luxury. Saffron's very calming to the heart. Almond milk, as we've mentioned, is very naturally sweet and grounding. If you want a little more sweet, you could add some maple syrup. And we have additional choices for the sensitive mind, which are considerations from Ayurveda, Anahimsa. Yeah. Let's talk about that a little bit. Sure. Ayurveda, although we talk a lot about self-care and looking after our bodies and looking after our minds, Ayurveda's primary focus is on giving us a stable, peaceful platform to explore our inner potential and our, our spiritual life. So Ahimsa is a really big Part of an Ayurvedic lifestyle is, is a Sanskrit word. Anyone who's familiar with yoga will probably have heard the word. Himsa in Sanskrit means harm, and ahimsa means no harm. So the recommendation in Ayurveda is that you eat a diet as peaceful to everyone involved as you possibly can, and that would be a plant and grain-based diet, so that you're eating peace and then you experience peace. And these are a lot of the meals that you have every day, the one pot meals that you make that you that you talk about that I'm always like, oh, I need to get another recipe from Ananga. It's easier now than ever as well. You know, a lot of people don't cook every day because they're busy and they're running around. But there are so many plant based alternatives in the supermarkets now. 
I took meat out of my diet when I was young. I was about 19, 20 years old. I just decided I wasn't comfortable eating it anymore. And at that time, that was when I was really suffering from anxiety, and my anxiety took a noticeable drop. If you think about it and you look at Ayurveda and Vata types, mind types, people who suffer from anxiety tend to be very sensitive people in a good way. Sure. You know, they're empathetic people. So I know for me, making that switch made a big difference to my peace of mind. And let's talk about some more seasonal choices as well. I mean, right now for you and I, we're both in areas of the world that are experiencing winter. And so uh, this time of year, we're really looking at more warm and nourishing soups and stews and baked squashes and, and things like that. All of those serve our bodies well. Yeah, grounding foods that just make you feel comforted when you eat them. Ayurveda has a very healing recipe, which is always recommended for cleansing and building strength in the body, called Kitri, which you can look up a recipe for online very easily. It's mung dal and rice and vegetables. And you can pop it in your slow cooker and just leave that simmering away on low. If you're going out to work for the day, it'll be waiting for you when you come home. And it's really important this time of year, too, for us to avoid cold drinks and iced coffees and anything that, that we're putting in our body that's cold. Yeah, it really does tax our immune system. It makes the body very congested and sluggish. And I'm amazed at this time of year. This is my grandma admission. I'm amazed at this time of year. <laughs> when I see people walking out of coffee shops and they've got these ice blended coffees, if I did that, I would be sick the next day for sure. My body would not tolerate it. I would instantly get a cold. So keep it warm. Uh, hot lemon water for cleansing in the morning, maybe with some fresh ginger. Hot water strengthens our digestion. It's extremely cleansing to the body. It's hydrating to the deeper tissues of the body. Sometimes the examples used of if you think of washing up, if you have a greasy plate and you run cold water over it, not a lot happens. The grease will just cling. But if you use warm water, the grease starts to melt away. So that's what happens in our bodies when we sip hot water throughout the day. It's super cleansing and hydrating at a deeper level. And for a more uh, active cleanse, you can add some spices like ginger or even a few black peppercorns to your water. Sometimes I like to make a big thermos flask in the morning of hot water with some spices in it and just sip it throughout the day. And then also we recommend and talk about this a lot, Pukka tea. Um, they have a great cleanse, a, a blend that, um, that I've had more than once because I gratefully can get Pukka tea on occasion from a, a local store. But this one in particular has a blend of fennel and nettle and peppermint. And it's a, a really lovely, it tastes good and, and so good for your body. Yeah, really good for anxiety sufferers. Fennel, really important for grounding and cleansing. Yeah, it's a great blend. So I think to continue the conversation, really stay hydrated and try and bring in more tea, more hot water, more detoxing herbal teas into your body. Just give it a try. There's so many choices. And certainly, we also talk about chamomile tea, lemon balm, peppermint. And then we just mentioned fennel. All of those are good for anxiety sufferers. Yeah, really soothing. And you feel better when you keep hydrated with hot drinks and, and bring those herbs into your life. So, again, just experiment. They're all readily available. And just try a few and see what you like. I used to find uh, chamomile really difficult to drink, but I know it's very good for me. And in Ayurveda, it's very highly rated. It's really you know, considered a very potent herb for calming and helping the mind. So I experimented with a few different blends, and I tried about four that I really didn't like. And then I just found one that was just pure chamomile, organic, and it's really nice. It's really pleasant. So that's my chamomile go-to at the moment. And then we often talk about ginger tea. And I know during this uh, this time of year for me and right now, I know our listeners are like, Shan has a cold. <laughs> <laughs> My voice is really deep. 
today, uh, <laughs> that ginger tea helps so much. It really does help clear congestion. And, and it's, you know, I'll be making some ginger tea as soon as we're done with the show today because I know how well it works. And it's yeah. warming and, and it also helps stimulate digestion as well. So there's that and the anti-inflammatory part of it. And it's so good for you. It's so good. And it's uplifting for the mind as well. It can help lift, lift you mentally, lift your spirits. It's really wonderful. Always use fresh ginger where possible. It has volatile oils and healing components in it that get lost when it's dried and ground. So go for fresh. Also, fresh ginger is more warming rather than heating. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you use dry ginger, it can upset some people's stomachs if they're prone to acidity. But fresh ginger's warm rather than hot. And it's just lovely. Really great, great way to start your day and certainly a good way to get through a cold. And then let's wrap today by talking about some of the calming spices that we can use in our recipes and drinks that, uh, that anxiety sufferers should keep in their cupboard. Spices like nutmeg, saffron, a nice bedtime drink for anxiety that's very calming and will help you get to sleep and stay to sleep would be a nice cup of hot almond milk or oat milk with a sprinkle of nutmeg and maybe some saffron on top. Nutmeg is sedative naturally. Saffron's very calming to the heart, as we mentioned earlier. So that's a really nice bedtime evening drink to help you feel settled and grounded. Fennel, as we've already mentioned, cumin, cooking, uh, both of these are very settling for a nervous stomach, which anxiety sufferers are often prone to. Ginger, we've already mentioned, that's back on the list. And cardamom. Cardamom is really a beautiful spice, which is also clearing and cleansing. It cleanses congestion. It's often used in Indian cooking with milk products because it helps reduce mucus. It also helps reduce the effects of caffeine. For some people who choose to still drink coffee, add some cardamom to their coffee. My neighbor had me over for tea a few days ago, and she had a, a cardamom turmeric blend mm. and with a, with a little bit of almond milk. And it was really good. I don't know what else was in it. I just remember those two items, and I was pleasantly surprised. You know, like, my neighbor is making these... <laughs> <laughs> wonderful teas as well and uh and just yum 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 so good so absolutely give yourself the the uh, experience of trying some new things some new spices some new teas some more nourishing food choices than you may have been making just see what happens food is medicine outside and inside right Absolutely. A lot of these things that we recommend cooking with and drinking, you can apply to your body externally. Um, simple things like putting some drops of lavender oil in a hot bowl of water and inhaling that in the evenings. Lavender is, as, you, as we all know, calming, but it's also uh, antibacterial. I think it's also antiviral. So inhaling lavender if you have a cold or you're feeling a little low, just to bring that beautiful uplifting floral scent into the darker months for those of us in the northern hemisphere such an easy thing to do for yourself it really is I'm, I'm glad we came together today to talk about this really important subject and we've given our listeners a, a lot to think about and we'll have all kinds of information in the show notes if you want to get more information and learn more about what we've talked about today uh, ananga thank you so much i enjoy our partnership and uh, appreciate our conversation so much and thank you to our listeners who keep coming back we appreciate you so much and enjoy making this podcast for you get everything you need to start slaying your anxiety today visit anxietyslayer.teachable.com to claim our free anxiety slayer starter course you get four guided sessions including an eft tapping session guided breathing practice and special module on overcoming the fear of anxiety. Don't just listen to the Anxiety Slayer podcast. Become an Anxiety Slayer. Claim your free Anxiety Slayer starter course at anxietyslayer.teachable.com.